You might think of electric cars as relatively new things, but like electrochemical batteries, they've been around for a really long time. For a while in the late 19th and early 20th century, they were actually far more popular than internal combustion engine cars, thanks to their ease of use, overall maintenance requirements, and overall cleanliness. The advantages that these early electric cars had over internal combustion engine ones didn't last all that long, however, as mass production techniques improved the internal combustion engine and it became far more reliable than it originally was. And by the time the Model T Ford was rolling off the production line, people chose petrol over electric. The main reason? The Achilles heel of electric cars their battery packs. You see, for the majority of the 20th century, the majority of electric cars made use of heavy lead acid or nickel iron battery packs. Towards the end of last century, more efficient chemistries like nickel cadmium or nickel metal hydride became more commonplace. But while each of these battery types had their advantages and disadvantages, Nickel iron batteries were, for example, super robust and had a long life, but didn't store a whole lot of energy for their size and weight, and they were pretty expensive to build, and nickel cadmium batteries have a high self-discharge rate. Few could offer everything that an electric car battery pack needed to be. Low manufacturing cost, long life, high energy density, and relatively low weight. That was until the lithium-ion battery became commonplace, a battery chemistry which has single-handedly helped accelerate the transition towards mass-market affordable EVs. And the people responsible for this? Nope, not Elon Musk or Tesla or any mainstream automotive brand out there. No, a trio of chemists who have been working on lithium-ion battery chemistry for the majority of their professional lives, chemists who have just been awarded the Nobel Prize for Chemistry. And I'm going to make sure that you know all about them and the names of each of these fantastic Nobel laureates. Enter Professors John B. Goodenough, M. Stanley Whittington, and Akira Yoshino. During the 1970s and 80s, these chemists, these three chemists, carried out all of the groundwork needed to bring the modern lithium-ion battery into existence each working on a little refinement to the cell chemistry of the lithium-ion battery that ultimately paved the way for the batteries we use today in everything from mobile telephones, laptops and tablet computers to the latest and greatest in electric cars. The metal lithium is the lightest of all metals in the periodic table. It has just three electrons, making it very light, and it does like to give away one of those electrons because of its shell, something which would theoretically make it very good for a battery, but which would also, unfortunately, make it extremely reactive. British chemist M. Stanley Whittingham, back in the 1970s, first proposed the idea of using lithium in a battery pack. Working for Exxon at the time, yes, that Exxon, Whittingham built an experimental battery using lithium metal for the battery's anode and titanium sulfide as the battery's cathode. During discharge, lithium ions would flow from the lithium anode through the electrolyte and join with the titanium sulfide at the cathode, producing an electrical current in the process. During charge, the opposite took place. Capable of producing a voltage of around 2 volts per cell, which was much better than the one point something volts of the then current best battery technologies, the battery he developed was powerful and light, but also pretty expensive to make. And the lithium metal he used was still very reactive, and thus not ideal. Many chemists worked on Whittingham's work in subsequent years, but it was John B. Goodenough who, sometime in the 1980s, built on Whittingham's battery by replacing the cathode material of the original battery design with cobalt oxide. The result? A battery pack which had an even higher potential uh, voltage between the two electrodes. By this point, lithium-ion batteries were shown to be far more energy-dense and longer-lived than other battery cell chemistries out there. But they still made use of that lithium at the anode, something which was less than ideal and meant that the batteries weren't super chemically stable. I mean, remember, lithium is a super reactive element and if it's in the right temperature, will burn very happily and easily in the air. 
So it was Akira Yoshiro, also working in the 1980s, who realized that you could replace the lithium metal of previous lithium ion batteries with a carbon material such as graphene to produce a far more stable lithium ion cell. It resulted in a battery that made use of the transition of lithium ions between the anode and the cathode when discharging and vice versa when charging, but which didn't use lithium at either electrode. It actually used carbon at the anode. Instead, it used materials that lithium ions could travel between during charge and discharge. And thus the basic construction of a modern lithium ion cell came into being. The exact construction of the anode and the cathode have changed with time. And there are many, many different chemical variants to the basic lithium ion cell today, but they all rely on the basic work of these three brand new Nobel laureates, all of whom are still actively working in academic roles today. Of course, I should note here that there are many, many other researchers who have worked on lithium ion battery technology for their entire professional lives. But without these three pivotal players, we'd likely not have the battery cells we have today, which means we wouldn't have the electric cars we have today. So I think all of us owe these three chemists a debt of gratitude. Before I go, I should also throw a little breadcrumb to the new next generation battery that Professor Goodenough, now aged 97, which by the way, makes him the oldest ever recipient of the Nobel Prize, is currently working on with other academics in Texas. A few years ago, Goodenough and his research partners said that they had developed a new solid state battery that made use of a glass electrolyte, no cobalt, and had a far longer life than current lithium ion batteries. I've not seen an update on this current technology, but it could be that Goodenough will not only be one of the fathers of the lithium ion battery, but also the next big battery breakthrough too. That's fantastic. That's it. Thanks for watching. And if I made a mistake, please let me know in the comments. I'm not a chemist or a physics major. And if you'd like to help us make more of these videos, please do like, comment and subscribe. Send us a couple of dollars our way every month through Patreon. Feed our coffee habit with Kofi or visit our swag store. I'll be back soon with more content for you all to enjoy. But until then, keep evolving.